I'm joined today by Satish Kumar, the Indian-born environmentalist who uh, 50 years ago, I believe, walked all the way from India to the UK uh, in protest at nuclear weapons. And uh, most recently, last week, you bought The Ecologist magazine, another long-running magazine. Um, Satish, thanks for coming in. Um, I've got some questions for you myself, and we've uh, had a lot on the site as well from readers. We've got one from uh, someone called Hedgenowich AP, um, who, who, in fact, this touches on uh, some, some of your themes. Um, do you think Eastern philosophical and religious traditions are more environmentally attuned than their Western counterparts? <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, the East somehow greater? It's a question of, um, question of interpretation. Mm. If you take Western religions, uh, in such as uh, St. Francis. Mm. Now, St. Francis of Assisi was a patron saint of ecology and no less ecologically minded than Tao mm -hmm. or Shinto or Hindu mm -hmm. or Buddhist. But in general, you can say that it may be true that uh, the Christian uh, tradition has been a tradition of subduing the earth and making humans more central, mm. whereas the Eastern philosophies like Tao uh, in China and Shinto uh, in, uh, in Japan and Hindu and Buddhist in mm. India, they always thought that earth is sacred, nature is sacred, we cannot own nature, we have to respect nature, we have to revere nature. And so that reverence for nature and, and a divine in nature um, is very strong Eastern philosophy. In the Western philosophy, you sometimes have this idea that God is separate from the world. Mm. God is outside the world. God created the world, but God is not the world and the world is not God. So that's the kind of philosophy, uh, you can say, difference. And that way, uh, the Eastern philosophy reveres nature more. Western philosophy uses nature, considering that humans are more important than nature. Uh, but that is not always true. Yeah. And when you take uh, uh, people like St. Francis, <coughs> and there are many others in, in a similar way, Spinoza, for example, mm -hmm. who was a great Western philosopher, these philosophers have a unity with nature. So in short, yes, but it's a bit more nuanced than that. Yes, yes. Exactly. The same reader asks, what do you think of the uh, coalition's environmental uh, policies and performance so far? I'm afraid I am disappointed with the coalition. Uh, David Cameron promised that this will be the greenest government ever. But in practice, it is not happening. Now, they are taking away the subsidy, uh, the, the tariff, um, uh, feed-in tariff, mm. which was uh, there mm. for the uh, solar energy mm -hmm. and uh, wind power, mm -hmm. they are taking away. They were trying to sell the forest. They are trying to build this new railway line um, uh, from London to Birmingham to H save 20 minutes. HS2. You, you, yes, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, high-speed yeah, railway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would say run the existing railways 20 minutes slower, not make them 20 minutes faster. By making slower, you are more environmentally friendly, people can relax, they can have a cup of tea in the train, they can read a book, they can come to Birmingham, not in a hurry. So what is the point of destroying the planet Earth, destroying our beautiful countryside to save 20 minutes of the businessmen? That's not a green policy. So I'm afraid I'm very disappointed with the coalition policies. Uh, they are not uh, that green. They are more obsessed with economy. And economy um, uh, has become such a thing that they, they think that the environment gets in the way of the economy. And I think that's a wrong uh, notion. Environment is the source of our economy. If environment is ruined, then economy will be ruined. Are, are they any worse in that respect than the previous administration, Labour? I think they are similar. Mm -hmm. They are similar. The previous Labour government was also very obsessed with the uh, with the economy mm. and my, not even economy. Economy is much bigger and more beautiful concept. They are obsessed with finance and money. Uh, although when Michael Nietzsche was the envi environment minister, mm. there were many many uh, interesting and good policies were uh, on mm. the agenda of the Labour Party. But he was sidelined, mm. and and then when he uh, was gone, then the environment policies became very weak indeed. There's a someone called Mr. Daniel Shields and Stepney 52, they, they ask questions around climate change. What you believe needs to be done really to take, to take action to, to prevent you know, disastrous climate change? The only thing uh, we can do is to learn to live with elegant simplicity. At the moment, our lifestyle is very wasteful and very extravagant and very complicated. So if we can make our lifestyle simple, 
but elegant. I promote through resurgence slow Sunday. At least one day on Sunday, which was a traditional Christian's day, but we can make it an ecological day and say on one day a week, no driving, no shopping, no use of fossil fuel, no global. By one decision, you can reduce one seventh of your carbon emission by stopping the use of carbon one day a week. So we can live a simple life and that way we can participate in the process of uh, mitigating the, the climate uh, change, uh, impact of climate change. I've got a few people who ask you, obviously you obviously walked a very long way from uh, India to, um, to the UK all those years ago. Um, There's a couple of people who asked about, about questions around walking. Kat Ellington, sorry, uh, asks, what are some of the most meaningful conversations you've had while walking? Could you maybe cite a couple of examples? One of the conversation I had was when I arrived in Pakistan, uh, people were afraid in India that when you go to Pakistan, you will be meeting Muslims and you will be meeting Pakistanis. India and Pakistan had three wars over Kashmir. So you are going to into an enemy country and you will be walking there. And I was walking without money, walking and no money. So people were worried. But when I arrived, Pakistanis had a wonderful uh, hospitality for me and for my friend. We were two of us. Mm. And so uh, the conversation I had with them was that if I come as an Indian, I meet a Pakistani. If I come as a Hindu, I meet a Muslim. But if I come as a human being, I meet a human being. And that approach that we are not representing India or we are not repre representing Hindus or we are not representing any particular sect or, mm. or, or political um, affiliation. Mm. We are here as human beings, fellow human beings. That touched the Pakistanis and others. Um, and, and we went through Muslim countries, Christian countries, communist countries, capitalist countries, um, uh, through snow, through mountains, through, um, through deserts, all kinds of conditions. But because we had a very simple, basic idea to meet everybody as a human being and not like a Russian or Persian or European or American or black or white or Christian or Jew or all these secondary identities we let go mm -hmm. and we said our primary identity is being human being and that was the conversation that we had everywhere and that was the most inspiring and everybody appreciated it. A related question from someone called Flamenca uh, wants to know when our population is going to be on the agenda as much as other environmental issues. Do you think it is a, a I issue? think population should be on the agenda now. Uh, we have been waited for rather too long. Already in my lifetime, the population of the world has more than doubled. When I was a young mm. man, mm. it was a, a 3 billion people, mm. and now there are nearly 7 mm. billion people. So now the time has come when we need to uh, work hard in educating people and giving more rights to women and more education to women and also um, uh, a kind of living standard. If living standard rises, then the population goes mm. down of the poor. Mm. So they need to rise a little bit and, uh, to be in a good, mm. healthy situation. You cannot have infinite number of people. And so, uh, and our impact on the earth, uh, more roads, more houses, more airports, more everything, uh, how much can we go on? Mm -hmm. So it's a finite planet. One of our readers, Blue Cloud, um, had a walking related question for you. He said, um, you walked from India to England in protest against nuclear weapons. Um, now we must all march to save ourselves from the environmental destruction we are causing. And he wants to know where should we walk to? <laughs> <laughs> I think you can walk uh, to any place. Um, you can walk from Berlin to Rome because Europe is contributing to global warming and climate change in a big way. And so if you walk from Moscow to Berlin, or Berlin to Rome, or, or, or from Berlin to Athens, whenever you, whenever you choose, from London to Istanbul, mm -hmm. whatever you choose, if you can create awareness and, 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 and a light footprint by walking uh, on, in Europe, you can say that these two legs, we are capable of going everywhere. We don't have to depend on cars and, and aeroplanes and trains and buses and other means of transportation, which requires fossil fuel use. So we have been given these wonderful two legs and we must not live as if we have no legs.
So in the society these days, people even they, if they want to go for shopping, uh, one mile or half mile uh, by a newspaper, they go in the car. Why? We have two legs. Even we don't need bicycle because even bicycle needs production. And production means factory. And factory means use of fossil fuel. So use your two legs as much as you can. So metaphorically, use your legs every day. And even if you want to literally walk long distance, walk within Europe from Berlin to Rome or from London to Istanbul and promote the idea and awareness about consumption, about population, about global warming, about uh, renewable energy. All these things are relevant. Thank you very much, Satish Kumar. You are welcome.